honestly to proud. I'm a key account manager at Telecom. I'm going to see Rachel Peterson and Richard Little from Rex Bionics. Rex Bionics has created a robotics exoskeleton which enables disabled people to be able to walk. Let's go meet the team. So Rex Bionics was started seven years ago when my best friend Robert Irvin was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and as a chap with multiple sclerosis there was a reasonable chance that he might require to use a wheelchair. Both our mothers are in wheelchairs so we had some experience of the physical and attitudinal barriers that people in chairs experience and so we thought we'd do something different. We thought we'd build a set of robotic legs that would provide um, mobility. Oof, the first thing you do when you design a set of robotic legs is you go for a pint, and because being two Scotsmen designing anything, that's where we started, and we, we sketched some stuff on the back of a beer mat, literally. And from those sketches, we just started talking about safety and battery power and, and getting serious about a set of user requirements. You know, what was it we were trying to do? We were trying to build a robot that would allow somebody to sit, stand, walk, get up and down stairs and up and down slopes. It would be safe, it would have some emergency backup systems, and it would be practical. We've always managed the expectations of the community by being real, being honest and engaging with them. There's something big in the disability world that says nothing about us without us. So we didn't come in and try and create something and tell people how they need it and how they should use it. We actually went and asked people, what do you think of this? Would you like to participate? Do you feel this will meet your needs? And we took all that information and made it integral to how we run this business and how we make these machines. We're in the stages of certification of the device. We're in the stages of um, then doing some limited sales close by till we build up our support networks before we can actually ship because when we ship it's really important that we get this right. To define the original um, group of Rex users we, we looked at a lot of sort of statistics and you know World Health Organization documentation and, and as many statistics as we could find from censuses and stuff like that around the world. We, we categorized a, a group of users so there was about five million between the states and Europe that would fit into, into this version of Rex. We don't do it so much by a certain disability or a certain age group. What we say is at the moment, the way the machine is, if you can self-transfer, which is move yourself from one seat to another, and if you can push and in your wheelchair, you'll be able to use this device. There's people that can't do those things that can use it, and we're constantly extending what we know and what we can do, but we've started there because that group of people will be able to get the most use of what we're able to deliver technologically at the moment. So we're concentrating there to start. Yeah, I mean, this is really just the beginning for Rex. You know, we've just launched the device now. We're just looking at building up our support networks and, and actually shipping the first version of Rex out to the world. The development of Rex will continue forever, really. I mean, it is just the beginning for us. You know, we'll be looking to build, like all technology, build something that's lighter and faster and smaller and, and hopefully cheaper as well.